Albert Breer, Monday morning quarterback. Man, doesn't seem that long ago that we had a chance to talk, so uh, <laughs> help me understand the uh, new kickoff rule and uh, did it uh, pass with flying colors? Yeah, so 29 yeses, three no's. The no's were, God, it's San Francisco, Green Bay, and Vegas were the three no's. And, and you know, I, I think this is sort of the outgrowth of a couple of things, Dan. The first is, you know, obviously the, the touchback rule last year, for the most part, eliminated the kickoff. Um, and it flipped where it had in the past been 80% return, 20% touchback. Um, it had gone to 80%, about 80% um, touchback last year. And so they wanted to find a way, the special teams coaches did, uh, to help put it back in the game. And so over the last two years, they've worked it, on it and crafted the idea of um, creating something that would put more returns in the game and maybe bringing to life the next Devin Hester, the next Dante Hall. And so um, it's the modification of the XFL rule. The idea overarching is to take speed and space out of the play to slow down the collisions. And they think this addresses the injury issue that the touchback will address last year and will add returns back into football. I mean, the idea is, and their belief is, this is going to add about 500 plays, 500 competitive plays to the game next year, which I think is a win for everybody, even if it is going to look a little weird and different. Okay, are there still going to be touchbacks? So it's interesting the way the rule sets up. So if you you have what's called the landing zone from the goal line to the 20, if you kick it into the landing zone and it bounces and it's not fielded and it goes into the end zone, it's a touchback that goes to the 20. If the kicker kicks it into the end zone, the ball comes all the way out to the 35. Okay. If you land short of the landing zone, then and it bounces before it hit it it touches it bounces before it gets to the 20, then the ball comes all the way out to the 40. So Essentially, you're penalizing the kicker for not putting it in that landing zone inside the 20, but short of the goal line. <laughs> and you're penalizing the return team if the ball lands in the landing zone and then bounces into the end zone. Yeah. I think I covered all that. <laughs> yeah. It's going to take some getting used to for sure. This is like a TED Talks. You know, you, 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 need, <laughs> yeah. a, you need a PowerPoint. You need charts up there. All right. The, uh, the famous, the infamous hip drop tackle. Uh, how did we get to this point that we now have to get rid of it in the sport? It's uh, it's an outgrowth outgrowth of Seahawk tackling, which is it's called Seahawk tackling because Pete Carroll kind of gave rise to the idea of this like wrap and roll technique, um, and you know really that's being employed at all levels of football now, where you see kids doing it, you see high schoolers doing it, you see college kids doing it, and obviously the pros, um, and it really has helped to take the head out of tackling. And it's helped with concussion rates. The downside of it is the hip drop, which is when you swing around. And I, I, I can give you a little bit of a visual aid here, but you <laughs> swing around, right? <laughs> uh, you swing around and you wrap your um, and Why you don't wrap you tackle somebody in the room? Hey, just grab an owner there, or somebody. There are, there, are, <laughs> there are actually a couple of guys over here I would like to tackle. Um, but <laughs> Not Jay Glazer. Don't, um, don't tackle Glazer. No, no I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not challenging Glazer to one of those. Um, yeah. But like, so basically like the, the, what happens, what happens with Seahawk tackling is you wrap and you roll. And so if you, if people listening can envision it, it's you're wrapping your arms around the guy and then you're using your weight to pull the guy down. And what's happened is it's almost like a, like a horse collar where a guy's feet get caught and pulled down. And so, you know, I, like it's unfortunate because again, it's an un unintended consequence of a change to football that really has made a positive difference. And I think my concern would be, okay, so they're going to have to work around this. Defense players are going to have to work around this. So there's probably going to be another unintended consequence somewhere, right? Like it's a violent game. So is the dog chasing its tail here? But I do understand why they did it because it was the, the, the injury rate with the play was so much higher than other plays. And um, it's going to take some adjusting for defensive players for sure. And it sounds like at first, at least, they're probably going to have to officiate it through fines rather than flags, but um, they're going to give guys some runway to get used to it. They're going to dish out some fines. And then I think by the time we get to the middle of the year next year, they'll probably be flagging it more often if they still see it. Would Mike Jones have been flagged in the Super Bowl with the tackle on Kevin Dyson? That's a good question. 
I have to go back and look at that one. The goal line play, right? Yeah, the, like the Super Bowl. Yeah, at the end of the yeah, the two thousand. Yeah. yeah, Rams Titans. Yeah, um, maybe I have to go back and yeah, look go at go it. back I mean, and I, look at it. Yeah. To be honest with you, there are all these different elements to it, which I have no idea how the refs are going to officiate. Yeah, it exactly. Like, at full speed, because I can't even like go through my head and like think of all the steps here as i sit so yeah. um yeah i think there's definitely gonna be some complications i, I would that that's an interesting one though i'll definitely go back and paulie look at that. are you looking yeah. at the video yeah it would be classic he wraps dyson around the waist mike jones and spins him and pulls him to the ground with his body mm. Okay. So does he swivel around though? That's like the there, there's possible swiveling. <laughs> possible okay, swiveling. Swivel because that's the thing is like if you swivel and then like it's like basically taking your feet off the ground, right? Like if you swivel and kind of like try to like get the guy to carry you, like that's when it's illegal. So if that's what he did, then yes, it'd be illegal. Yeah, half and the distance, first, half the distance to the first, goal. <laughs> and it'd be first, yep. It would be, and, and and then the Kurt Warner story might be a little different. And, and untimed down, be a Super Bowl champion. Yeah, yeah, uh, it'd be untimed. an untimed down of the one. Uh, untimed down with Eddie George in the backfield. Um, roughing the passer. Uh, when will we have replay? Like, what brings about replay on roughing the passer? It has to be. It has to be very clear, and it has to be cut and dry situations. And so, I think what's going to govern this, and I've always been a proponent of like the idea of a sky judge, right? which I think that they should empower an official and put him upstairs and have him use the benefit of all of the crystal clear HD angles that we all have the benefit of home at home uh, benefit of at home. I think it's patently insane that all of us have that benefit, but the people who are in charge of the game on the field don't. Um, so I think this is another step in that direction. And what will govern it, Dan, is that they won't allow you to change the call after I think it's the 22nd cutoff on the, on the play clock. Right. So once the play clock gets to 20 seconds, then you can't change it. So it almost by definition has to be obvious, right? You have to go in and see it like right away or it, or, or you won't be able to go in and change the call on the field. So I think, I think it's an effective way of taking a play out, taking, taking bad calls out that I think have frustrated every one of us. And, and hopefully, hopefully it's, you know, another step towards a really efficient sky judge system, which they don't want to call it the sky judge. They want to call it replay assist. But, um, you know, it's, I think a step in the a direction that a lot of coaches and people in the league have wanted them to go in, in a long, for a long time. He's the Monday morning quarterback, Albert Breer, joining us from the NFL owners meetings. You guys all get together. The owners are there. Media's there. And everybody is chopping things up, talking about things, rumors, speculation. And we have spoken about this. Top of the draft. Why do you think there's a real good chance the first four picks will be quarterbacks? Because I think there's a good chance the first three sit there and take quarterbacks, and then there's a handful of teams that I think are going to look at trading up, and the Cardinals, I think, will take a serious look at trading down. Um, I am 99% of the Bears are taking Caleb Williams. Um, I think something would have to happen for them not to take Caleb at this point. At number two, I think the likelihood is still Jaden Daniels from LSU. Now, I think at three, there's a little bit more of a possibility than a two of a trade. Um, I think New England's looking at this and saying, all right, like if the right quarterback falls to us, we take him. If the one one we like goes to and then we don't like the guy at three quite as much, would they look at trading down? I think they would consider that. Um, I still think I think it's probably more likely they take quarterback, but I don't think the idea of trading down is out of the picture for them at all. And if it goes one, two, three quarterbacks, like let's say that's 60, 40, 70, 30 right now, um, that the three teams at the top stick and take quarterbacks. Well, then you've got teams that have investigated trading up in the Giants, the Raiders, the Vikings. And I think the Broncos are lurking as a dark horse, like four teams that could be in the market to move up. And the Cardinals sitting there at four with a, real chance to turn that pick into a lot more picks. And so I think for the first time ever, we could wind up having four quarterbacks going one, two, three, four, which would also mean that JJ McCarthy has moved into that top tier quarterbacks where I think for the last couple of months, Caleb Williams, Drake May, and Jaden Daniels have been. Good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. I know you're busy. You got it. Thanks, Dan. Albert Breer, the Monday morning quarterback. That's some interesting things there. Yeah. The possibility of, uh, Four quarterbacks, bang, 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 bang.